Diphenylmethane diisocyanate, commonly called MDI, and its derivatives will react with water, including moisture in the air, polyol, or any alkaline compound, such as ammonia or detergents. Because of this reactivity, these materials may present potential physical and health hazards during handling. In this hazard communication section, we will discuss the physical characteristics of MDI, the routes of entry, potential health effects of overexposure, first aid procedures, and the personal protective equipment required when handling MDI. Physical and chemical testing provide both manufacturers and customers with information necessary to protect employees as well as information pertaining to the physical properties of the material. This physical data can differ depending on whether the MDI material is polymeric or non-polymeric. Additional information can be obtained from the Material Safety Data Sheet, MSDS, or the technical data sheet accompanying the product. Physical data testing has shown that liquid MDI may solidify at certain temperatures depending upon its mixture. Specific information on your particular product can be obtained from the product's MSDS. MDI has a flash point greater than 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Thus, it is not ignited readily. Therefore, MDI should be treated as a non-toxic material for storage and handling under the International Fire Code. However, it will burn if exposed to an ignition source at or above the flash point temperature, and fires are possible if proper care is not taken. Viscosities of the various components of MDI are product specific. Please consult the MSDS or the technical data sheet for the product being handled. Testing has also shown that MDI is reactive with certain types of materials, including water. When these are mixed together, heat and carbon dioxide are generated. Over time, this can create excessive pressure in closed containers. It's extremely important that MDI should not come in contact with moisture or water during transfer operations. Other reactive agents include, but are not limited to, ammonia, polyols, alcohols, amines, caustic soda, and caustic potash. Molten MDI is a clear, water-white liquid. However, some polymeric and MDI pre-polymer mixtures can be colored amber to dark brown. Let's take a look at some of the potential health effects associated with MDI overexposure. For a chemical to cause health effects, it must make contact with or enter the body. There are three major routes of entry through which this can occur. Inhalation or breathing, skin or eye contact, and ingestion or swallowing. You should be aware of these routes of entry when handling MDI. If overexposure by any route occurs, seek immediate medical attention. Due to its relatively low transport temperature, MDI has a low vapor pressure that greatly reduces the potential for exposure by inhalation. Industrial hygiene studies have indicated that airborne MDI concentrations remain well below the permissible exposure limit under normal transportation handling and storage conditions. Exposure to airborne MDI at elevated temperatures or during spraying applications may cause irritation of the eyes, nose, throat, and lungs. Difficulty breathing, tightness in the chest, and coughing are also symptoms of overexposure. In most cases, these symptoms will disappear within a few hours after the exposure takes place. Overexposure to airborne MDI may cause respiratory allergy or sensitization. Skin contact may also be associated with respiratory allergy. Once sensitized or allergic to MDI, a person may react to extremely low airborne concentrations of MDI. Anyone who shows signs of irritation or asthma-like symptoms should be moved to fresh air and given immediate medical attention. The onset of these symptoms may occur immediately or be delayed. Therefore, medical personnel should observe overexposed individuals for several hours after exposure. Liquid MDI can be irritating to the skin or eyes. Skin contact may result in redness, 
and may also cause skin sensitization, an allergic reaction. Symptoms such as redness, itching, and rash may occur when a sensitized person contacts MDI. Once a person has become sensitized, that individual should no longer work with MDI. For skin exposure, wash with soap and water. Remove any contaminated clothing. For larger exposures, use an emergency shower. Eye contact may result in redness, but tissue injury is not expected if MDI is immediately and thoroughly rinsed from the eyes. For eye exposure, flush the eyes with running water for at least 15 minutes and then seek medical attention. It is important an eye wash station and safety shower be located in the immediate area when MDI is being handled. Although unlikely, accidental ingestion or swallowing of any chemical could occur. MDI has a low potential of toxicity by ingestion. For ingestion of MDI, do not induce vomiting. Seek medical attention immediately. Eliminating exposure at the source will prevent these potential health effects. As with all chemical shipments, hazard communication information is attached to all containers, either by a warning label or tag. If additional handling information for MDI is required, please refer to the manufacturer's material safety data sheet. Everyone involved in the handling of MDI must be equipped with the appropriate personal protective equipment. This includes appropriate impervious clothing such as chemical protective suits, chemical splash goggles, and chemical resistant gloves and boots. Harmful airborne concentrations of MDI may occur at elevated temperatures. Approved respiratory protection may also be required when handling MDI at elevated temperatures. Approved respiratory protection must comply with OSHA regulations. To prevent overexposure to airborne vapors, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, and the American Conference of Governmental Industrial Hygienists, ACGIH, have established exposure limits for MDI. Airborne concentrations must be kept below these limits. The odor threshold, or point at which you can detect MDI with your sense of smell, is above the permissible exposure limit. Therefore, odor should never be used to indicate the presence of MDI. Since MDI has poor warning properties, the workplace should be periodically monitored for airborne MDI. If you can smell MDI, you may be exposed above the permissible exposure limit. In this hazard communication section, we have covered the physical characteristics of diphenylmethane diisocyanate, the routes of entry, potential health effects of overexposure, first aid, and the appropriate personal protective equipment required for a safe transfer operation. If you have any further questions or are unsure of the actions required of you, ask your supervisor or team leader, or contact the product manufacturer. For more information on the topics covered in this section, consult the following literature developed by the Center for the Polyurethanes Industry, Model Respiratory Protection Program, PMDI User Guidelines for Protective Clothing Selection, industrial hygiene air monitoring for MDI and TDI.